Hey. Uncle Joe, aren't you dressed yet? What do I have to wear a collar and tie for? Out of respect to Professor Lieberschmidt. Well, I respected Cora Nielsen when Bobby Joe auditioned her and I didn't wear no collar and tie. There is no comparison between Cora Nielsen and Professor Lieberschmidt. She is just a plain singing teacher and the professor is a music authority. Mom! I gotta go help Bobby Joe. Now you get dressed. Sacrifices I go through for them girls. <laughs> Mom, maybe I better put on another dress. Mm -mm. This will be just fine. All it needs is a little fixing here at the zipper. How's this? Oh, it's the wrong color. Gosh, what is this, an audition or a fashion show? Mom, why does everybody have to argue with me? <sighs> See if Billy Joe has another one. <laughs> Mom, I want to put on my black dress. Honey, if you don't stop moving, I'm going to stick you. Ah. Ooh, sounds like Mom struck a nerve. Have you got a scarf? Well, what's wrong with that one? She doesn't like it. Well, she should. It's hers. <laughs> Go look in my room. Here are the shoes. I need blue shoes. Well, they were blue before I dyed them. I need blue shoes! Find a pair, find a pair. I couldn't find a scarf in your room. Oh, you better tell Madame Butterfly. Oh, that's much better. Thank you. <laughs> Why'd you like it? Mom, what time is it? Oh, uh, time is it? Uh, oh, it's almost eight. I'm so nervous. Now, honey, calm down. I tell you what, take three deep breaths. Professor Lieberschmidt? <laughs> fine, fine. Good. Would you like a glass of water? Uncle Joe, get the professor a glass no, of water. No, thank you. Oh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your taking the time to listen to Bobby Joe. No, it's no trouble at all. Well, I just had to have someone who knows tell me whether she's got it or she hasn't got He's it. He's got it all right. Well, now, Uncle Joe, the professor is the expert. Let him decide. Well, I ain't exactly an amateur when it comes to music. I've been maestro in the volunteer fire department band for over a year. <laughs> Uncle Joe, there is no connection between the fire department band and music. <laughs> I'd be happy to give you the benefit of my meager experience, Mrs. Prattley. Meager experience? Oh, you're being modest. How long have you been selling piano rolls? <laughs> I'm ready, Mom. Oh, good. Now, Professor, do you have any favorites? Oh, yes, 275, one of my best sellers. Oh, good. Put, put, put on 275. Billy Joe, now, Bobby Joe, you stand over there, huh? Oh, oh. oh. oh I'm sorry. Oh. Now, Professor, uh, we want you to tell us the truth about whether you like her or not. Why shouldn't they like her? He's getting his room for nothing, ain't he? <laughs> I took more music lessons than you did. <laughs> you turned the pages. But we don't need sheet music. Do you want Professor Lieberschmidt to think we're amateurs? <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Something's stuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole family's musical. <laughs> Here's your bone, Beethoven. <laughs> now? Now. Mom, would you get him out of here? No eating during the performance. Go ahead, Bobby Joe. Should I re-roll? No, just keep going. Believe. Change by tomorrow <laughs> and break in my arms like fairy gifts fading away. Thou would still be a word as this moment thou art. Let thy loveliness fade. 
as it will and around the dear ruin each wish of my heart would and twine itself verdantly still Professor, what do you think? Oh, I, there's no doubt about it, Mrs. Bradley. Bobby Joe has a tremendous talent. Oh. <laughs> However, <laughs> she is going to need some professional training, a good coach. Well, there's Cora Nielsen over in Pixley. She's the head vocal coach for the Elks Fife and Drum Corps. <laughs> I was thinking more of a New York voice coach. Well, I don't think we got any New York boys coaches in Pixley. No. <laughs> I mean, in New York. New York? The Empire State Building. The Statue of Liberty. Hey, this means Broadway. Oh, and a million flashing lights, off and on, off and on. Your limousine, Miss Bradley. Oh, no, no, not the green one. I'm in a pinkish mood this evening. Miss Bradley's pinkish limousine. <laughs> Miss Bradley's pinkish limousine. <gasps> Miss Bradley, may I have your autograph? Say cheese. Oh, no pictures, please. My dears, I just haven't the time. Uh, Miss Bradley? Oh, yes, my dear. Would you like my autograph, too? No. I was wondering if you'd mind making a personal appearance. Certainly, darling. Where? In the kitchen. <laughs> In front of a sink full of dirty dishes. Oh, Mom! Go ahead. And take your fan club with you. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have mentioned New York. Oh, when they were younger, you could have gotten the same performance by mentioning Pixley. You're gonna let her go, ain't you? Well, first, I gotta figure out a few little things, like uh, how much the trip's gonna cost. <laughs> Well, she ought to be able to get a nice room for a dollar a night at the YMCA. Price is right, but the roommates are wrong. <laughs> oh, I mean the YWCA. They're exactly the same thing, except I hear they got shower curtains at the YW. <laughs> now, let's see, that'll be $7 a week. Uh, how long do you figure it'll take the coach to vocalize her? Professor Lieberschmidt said two or three months. Well, that'd be about $85 in round figures for a room. I suppose you want her to eat. Mm, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> you better figure about 75 cents for supper, plus a nickel tip. Uh, they expect that in New York. <laughs> well, let's see now, that's five dollars a week, so the supper's come to sixty dollars. And then she'll need another five dollars a week for breakfast and lunch. Yeah. Well, what else? Laundry. Well, she can take her laundry into the shower with her. <laughs> I suppose, as long as they have curtains. <laughs> Well, let's see, we've got down about everything here except uh, vocal lessons. I think we ought to allow a dollar each for them. Look, well, you better figure a dollar and a quarter because we want the very best. <laughs> now, how much does that come to? Well, let's see, odd and odd is odd and odd is odd. Five and odd is five. Comes to about $290.50. Two hundred and... I don't have that kind of money. Well, Kate, if Bobby Joe was my daughter, I'd sell the store to raise the money. I'd sell the hotel, but I don't think I'd get that much for it. <laughs> Kate, well, there, well, there ought to be some way to raise it. There's one thing I've been hanging on to, and I kind of hate to part with it. Your engagement ring? Yes. Kate, you can't sell your ring. It's the only way that Bobby Joe's going to get to New York. But, Kate... Excuse me.
it, Mr. Gurney? Oh, yes, beautiful. I've been saving it for an emergency when I needed a lot of cash. A lot of cash? Oh, yes, I'm going to need at least $300 to send Bobby Joe to New York. $300? And, and I know how you like collateral when you lend money, and Bill always said that diamonds are the best collateral. Oh, yes, diamonds are. Well, if you're worried about it being real, uh, why don't you scratch it on some glass? Oh, no, no, I'm sure it's real. Uh, $300, hmm? I don't want to borrow the full value on it. Well, uh, I don't know too much about diamonds. What do you think it's worth? Well, Bill always hinted that he paid Uncle Joe around $1,000 for it. Uncle Joe? <laughs> Well, I'll be... It is a diamond. Uncle Joe got Bill a special price through this friend of his who was a diamond cutter in Amsterdam. They certainly know how to cut diamonds in Holland. This was Amsterdam, New York. <laughs> well, uh, Mrs. Bradley, the bank doesn't like to lend money on jewelry. I'm afraid we couldn't give you what it's worth. Oh, I'll settle for the $300. But, uh... Mr. K. I am a very good customer of this bank. Well, I don't think there's anybody in this whole valley that owes you more money than I do. I know. I think my goodwill's worth something. $275 for goodwill, $25 for the dime. I beg your pardon? Oh, I was just thinking aloud that your goodwill is worth more than the dime. What? I mean to ask. Then I can count on the loan? Well, I'll have to speak to my board of directors, but I'm sure I can force them to, I mean, to convince them. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gurney. Yes. No, no, you keep it. <laughs> Gurney say about that genuine diamond ring Bill made me get for him? He said he'd lend me $300 on it. He did? Uh-huh, and the way he acted, I probably could have borrowed much more. I always told Bill he made a real good buy. You know, people don't generally know the value of them genuine Amsterdam, New York diamonds. Well, at the time, I wasn't sure whether... But I apologize for what I was thinking. <laughs> You mean I'm really going to New York? Uh-huh. Oh, Mom! <laughs> now, remember, you're going there to study. Oh, I will, I will. You're going to have to practice and work hard. I promise I will, Mom. And you're going to have to do... Oh, I promise, I promise. Wait, wait a minute till you find out what you're promising. <laughs> now, I borrowed $300 from the bank. That means you're going to be on a very strict budget. I don't care. I'll live on bread and water. I'll starve. Probably wind up doing that. But if you want a career, you gotta make sacrifices. Oh, I know, Mom. I promise I will. Mom! I'm in Bobby Joe's room. Oh, wait till I tell Billy Joe. Mom, have I got news? Have I got news? Mom's sending me to New York. Oh, how wonderful. What's your news? I'm going to Hollywood. Hollywood. Well, I didn't want to say anything, but a month ago, the secretarial school sent in a picture of me to Mammoth Studios. And they offered me a job. Acting? Typing. With a chance for a screen test. Well, they had a contest for beautiful secretaries, and the ones that they selected would get a chance to try out for their new picture called The Perfect Secretary. <laughs> I know you'll get a part. And just think, you'll be a star in Hollywood, and I'll be a star in New York. And I'll be a nervous wreck in Hooterville. <laughs> oh, Mom, I can go, can't I? They're going to pay all my expenses. Oh! Except my fare. Oh. Uh. <laughs> that won't be so much. Well, whatever it is, it's a small price to pay to launch one on the road to stardom. <laughs> well, it would be if I hadn't borrowed $300 to send Bobby Joe to New York. Well, Mom, now that isn't fair. If she can go to New York, I can go to Hollywood. Well, I asked first. Well, what's the difference? Mom said I could go. But she can change her mind. No, she can't. Why not? Because she can't. She, she might. She won't. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> the argument's over. <laughs> Dog's head's gonna come loose. Oh, Mom, you made it. Mom, it's not fair. She can go to New York. Time, 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 time. Now, look. Maybe, and I just said maybe, I can work it out for both of you to go. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. 
275, 280, 290, 300. And I wish Bobby Joe the best of luck. Oh, thank you. And I know you wish Billy Joe the same, too. Billy Joe? She's going to Hollywood. Hollywood? I I'm going to need $200 more. What? She's going to get a screen test. Mrs. Bradley, you don't know what trouble I had convincing the board of directors about that ring. I can't possibly go back to them for any more. Well, do you think that's fair? Letting Bobby Joe go and not Billy Joe? <laughs> me? I... Would you like me to send them in and you tell them? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Would another hundred help? I think the girls could squeeze by on two hundred apiece. Five. Five, ten. <laughs> Well, I did the best I could, but the most I could borrow was another hundred, which makes two hundred apiece, and I don't think it's going to be enough. All we got to do is get there. If you just wait another year. Another year? Mom, I'm going to be an old lady. Well, I would worry about that. I do. You know how old age creeps up on you. Are you talking to Bobby Joe or me? <laughs> Mom, we got to go. Hi. 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 What's going on? Well, she's going to New York, and I'm going to Hollywood. That's great. And I'm going to New Hampshire. That's one you're going where? <laughs> oh, Cromwell Hall. It's a school in New Hampshire. What are you talking about? Well, you know how everybody always laughs at me because I play shortstop with the Hooterville Hawks? Mm -hmm. Well, it paid off. My gym teacher got me a scholarship in phys ed. I get free tuition, room, board, books, everything except clothes and transportation. Well, I can go, can I, Mom? No, you can't. I've got barely enough to send Bobby Joe and Billy Joe. Well, if they can go, I can go. Well, we can't all go. Why not? Hold it, hold it. You know, you girls should be ashamed of yourselves. It used to be that you were one for all and all for one, and now you're all for yourselves. We're sorry, Mom. It's just that it's so important to all of us. Well, I realize that. But I also realize that it's pretty foolish to try and divide $400 between the three of you, or even two of you. What the sensible thing to do would be, one of you should go. Which, Which one? one? That's gonna take a little thinking. Billy Joe, Bobby Joe, Betty Joe. Which one? Tough problem. Billy wants to be an actress. Bobby wants to be a singer. And Betty wants to be a shortstop? <laughs> oh, that wasn't hard to figure out. <laughs> an actress and a singer. Because logically speaking, a girl has about as much chance of becoming a Hollywood star as winning the sweepstakes. <laughs> Bobby Joe gets it. <laughs> and education is much more important than singing. <laughs> uh, Betty Joe's the choice. <laughs> On the other hand, Billy Joe's a real beauty. And there's no doubt if she got a screen test, she might become a big star. Well, I guess it's Billy Joe. <laughs> Again, that's not fair. Bobby Joe's got a lot of talent. And Betty Joe might not get a wonderful offer like that from Cromwell Hall again. You pick one. <laughs> it's no easier for me. <sighs> Billy Joe gets it. I think I ought to make it two out of three. <laughs> decision yet? Uh, not exactly. We have. We decided Billy ought to go. She's the oldest. This may be her last chance. Thanks. <laughs> you see, we figured if Billy goes to Hollywood and gets the screen test, she's got to be a big star. So when she starts making money, she can send it to Bobby Joe. Then Bobby Joe can go to New York and take singing lessons. And when she gets a job singing, she can send me the money to go to school in New Hampshire. <laughs> it's the fairest way we could figure it out. It's not the fairest way, because you all deserve to go. But... If you decide it, it's going to be Billy Joe. Oh, that does it. 
Want to lick the bowl? She was talking to me. <laughs> Well, you can have it when he's through. <laughs> uh, what time's everybody getting here for a Billy Joe surprise party? About seven. Uh -huh. Good evening, Mother. Billy Joe, you're not supposed to come in here. Come in where? You feel all right? Oh, I feel the best I've ever felt my whole life. Billy Joe? Billy Joe? Mom, I finally met him. Who's him? Neil Greeley. Oh, Neil Greeley. Isn't that a dreamy name? He's tall and handsome and he's got wavy hair and blue eyes. No, Mom, I'm in love. Oh. Well, why not? I've said that to you before, but this is the real thing. You said that before. No, Mom, this is the real, real thing. Oh, well, it's a shame you met him just when you're going to Hollywood. Hollywood? Who wants to go to Hollywood? I thought you did. Well, that was yesterday. <laughs> before I met Neely. Mom, let Bobby Joe go to New York. If you're sure that's what you want. You're not going to change your mind again in two weeks. Mom, you don't understand. This is the real thing. This is forever. Three weeks? <laughs> Never. Okay. <laughs> Uncle Joe. <laughs> Scratch Billy Joe. What? She's changed her mind. She's not going to Hollywood. She's in love, and this time it's the real thing. Who's a three-weeker this time? <laughs> Neil Greeley. Well, uh, what about the party and the cake? We'll take Billy's name off and put Bobby's on. Mom, where are you? In the kitchen, but don't come in. Well, how's the surprise party coming? Well, it's going to be more of a surprise than I thought. You see, Billy Joe changed her mind. She met something called um, Neil Greeley. Oh, well, I guess the party's going to be for Betty Joe then, huh? No, it's going to be for you. You're going to New York. Well, no, I'm not. You know? No, I've been talking to Mrs. Nielsen, and she said that a good New York voice coach costs about $15 a lesson. Well, I'd last about two lessons in two weeks. Yes, but Bobby Joe, I borrowed the money no, so that... No, Mom. Let Betty Joe go to Cromwell Hall. That's your decision. It is. <laughs> Going to New Hampshire. Oh, no, I'm not. Well, what's the matter with you? I thought you wanted to go to Cromwell Hall. I did, till I found out. It's a girls' school. <laughs> I can't play baseball with girls. <laughs> what are you going to do now? You going anywhere? No. Neither am I. <laughs> well, for the time being, let's just make it. To whom it may Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.